<laughs> Tell us about this attempt to sabotage Daniel Cormier with uh, Popeye's chicken. I'm very curious about this. Now it's a sabotage. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call it a sabotage by any means. It was more of a, a test of his will. Um, you know, I knew he would, you know, he, he's committed to, to making weight, and I knew he wouldn't just go and eat all the chicken. But it was just, uh, you know, it, more of a test of his will and, and make him laugh a little bit about it. They're kind of lighting up things, being that you guys had been on this intense media tour for probably what a couple of weeks or a week, and uh, no, it was mostly just all on Monday. It was we did from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, so a long day on Monday, and and uh, he was talking about his Popeyes chicken all day, <laughs> so it was uh, accommodating him. When Dana first came back to you and said this fight would be this date, it, you, like you said, it was only a couple weeks after the Shogun fight, which was a pretty grueling fight. What did you feel like at the time? Because you haven't had a quick turnaround like this in a while. Uh, my body felt fine. Um, you know, I didn't have any injuries from the fight at all. You know, I got knocked silly, but other than that, I was fine. Um, you know, not even a headache afterwards type of thing. But, uh, you know, it was, it was more about making sure I got the proper training camp for, for DC. He's a different wrestler than, than most guys I've faced and, and I wanted to be able to have time to bring in good training partners, good wrestlers and, and you know I knew that would be kind of tough at the, for this fight, which it was. You know we had the USA had their nationals uh, less than a month ago and, and uh, their world team trials are next week. so it was tough. I couldn't get any top guys out here because of that. Uh, even saying that you, you know you were, you were knocked silly in the fight a little bit, you, you didn't feel like I could use a little more time here to just kind of you know rest my rest my brain and, and rest my body. You know? Uh, no, I mean, like I said, I was it was I was recovered out after the second round when I I just decided to hold on to him when I, when he knocked me down and, and make sure I get recovered completely and and knew that I needed to go after him starting in the third round, get aggressive to. to to win every round, to, to even come close to being able to win the fight by decision, you know. So at that point, I think my mind was clear and ready to go. And so even after the fight, two weeks later, I felt great, you know. And, and I knew that I knew that uh, DC would be a tough fight, but if I needed uh, to get back where I wanted to be, I got to fight the top guys. So. I just want to ask you real briefly about uh, Henan Burrell's streak of, you know, him. I don't know how closely you follow him, but the fact that he's, he hasn't lost in 32 straight fights. I mean, how incredible is that? From You guys know how difficult it is to go through camp and to fight and so many things to go wrong. Well, I think it's it's very incredible. And, and uh, you know, I don't know who the next closest guy's streak is, but it's, you know, depending on, I don't know all the competition that he's faced with that in that streak, but uh, the last couple of years definitely has been the top guys in, in the in his weight class. So, and he and he's continued to keep his streak going. So, you know, I think it's very impressive, and and you know, I don't, I don't, I doubt it'll be a streak somebody will be able to, to compete with. They say MMA wrestling is a lot different than, let's say, you know, Greco-Roman or freestyle because of the timing. How do you think that your wrestling and, and Daniel's wrestling match up when you compare them? Uh, you know, he, he uses his wrestling uh, more than I do in fights, offensively, I should say. You know, he he sets his strikes up real well with with going after the legs a little bit and, and vice versa you know sets his takedowns up with his strikes and, and you know that's that's pretty good to, to have and, and to do uh, you know I think for me I use my wrestling more on a defensive note because I know that my best chance of finishing guys to, to, to knock them out you know and I need to be on my feet for that so I, I typically use my wrestling quite a bit for defense and and uh and controlling in the clinch and trying to wear him out there so you know that's pretty much what's going to happen in this fight he's going to be more on the the offense part of the wrestling and i'm going to be more on the defense part and and uh still want to control him in the clinch and, and make him work you talked quite a bit about how you felt physically after the the shogun fight what about mentally you hadn't won in you know one two years what was it like to just get back in the winner's circle well, obviously, it's always uh, mentally good to, to have that win, and, and you know, especially coming off off of the loss against Vitor. Uh, you know, I was 
bummed out, but you know it was all, it was very nice and and to, to have that confidence back in myself. Not that I lost much confidence, but uh, it's it's a good feeling to to know that you're still capable of doing things to, to guys that uh, you know you, you thought you could do. Speaking of that, do you think that Daniel Cormier's chin has been tested yet, or are you the man to do it? No, I don't think. You know, he hasn't been hit yet, and he knows that. He said that, that he really doesn't know how good of a chin he has, other than possibly in training, you know, if he's getting hit in training. But uh, I don't know that, and you guys don't know that. So uh, hopefully we can all know that after this, uh, after this fight.